Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. Call of Duty Vanguard just came out. I've got three easy tips that you can use to have more fun and more success in Vanguard. Because it's got some quirks and stuff, and I think this is really going to help you out. So let's go talk about it. All right, minions, so let's dive into this. The three tips that I'm gonna talk about in this video are gonna be playing more defensively, not playing the objective, and knowing the meta of the game. So some of those may strike you a little strange, especially if you've been around a while. So let's dive into each one and talk a little bit about it. So first, let's talk about playing defensively in Vanguard. Because there's an extremely fast time to kill in this game, it makes it so that getting caught out is a lot more deadly because you can literally be killed before you even have the chance to react. You don't even know what happened. And I'm not talking about like a one-hit sniper kill. I'm talking about someone shooting you from long range with an automatic. You can be dead before you even realize what's happened. Some of the faster killing weapons in this game, uh, like the automatics, have a 200 millisecond time to kill. And a good connection to a Call of Duty game is in the ballpark of... 50 to 60 milliseconds. And so it goes up from there. You can get matched into games where you have a 100 millisecond ping, 135 millisecond ping in the, in the game. So you're talking about a quarter to over a half of your time to kill just in connection. So that makes, that makes the game feel very frustrating if you're playing aggressively. There's a big connection advantage. So when you're moving around corners, if you're the aggressor, you're the one that gets the advantage. Um, so it may seem like playing aggressively is the better way to do it, but there's so many angles that it, it really doesn't lend itself well to an aggressive playstyle. We'll break into that a little bit more. Um, but going along with that, the map designs are very scattered, and there's a lot of angles. This is a thing that I'm not a big fan of in shooters in general, especially Call of Duty games with a fast time to kill. It's something that kind of started in Modern Warfare 2 with like maps like Favela. I always think in my mind that was one of the first maps in Call of Duty that was like... What the fuck? <laughs> Vanguard has a lot of maps like that where no matter where you go, there are like six or seven different directions you can be shot from. And because the spawns are kind of crappy, you don't necessarily know where people are around you, whether they're going to spawn behind you, in front of you, because the audio is bad or broken. You can't really tell when people are running up near you. You won't hear enemy footsteps 99% of the time. So all of those things combined make it so that it puts you at a big disadvantage to be aggressive. You will notice in your games that people are being a lot more reserved. They're playing defensively. They're sitting back, maybe even camping, not playing the objective. This is all because of the balance, the way that they've designed this game with the fast time to kill. So these are things I'm going to, by, by talking through this a little bit more, help you to use in a way that isn't shitty and campy and frustrating. Um... It, as I've been using these tips, I've been enjoying the game quite a bit more. Um, so map knowledge is going to be very important. Knowing which routes around the map have fewer angles make, you know, give you a safer position to move through the map and find where the enemy is, is going to be important. Map knowledge is going to be huge. Um, learning where power positions are. Learning which places on the map you can limit your lines of sight. Kind of do, as I've described in previous videos, tactical camping. I don't... I don't approve of camping in general, where you're essentially sitting in a corner waiting for people to walk by and kill them. Although a degree of that is absolutely necessary in Vanguard, I'm sad to say. But tactical camping is essentially finding defensible areas. So instead of waiting for people to come to you and killing them when they walk around the corner, tactical camping is finding areas with limited lines of sight and looking out and killing people out ahead of you from a position of advantage. So it's an important difference. You gotta learn both of those, and in Vanguard especially, there are definitely times where you have to work old school camping. You Sometimes you have to sit in a corner and wait for someone to walk by because you don't know where their footsteps are. It's harder to locate where they're coming from. Sometimes you just have to do that in this game. Um, and in that same vein, just in general, after you get three or four kills in any location, because we're talking about map knowledge, we're talking about strong positions, you're going to have to relocate. If you find a good power position, if you find a good location where you can engage the enemy effectively from a position of relative safety, it's not going to take long, about three or four kills in a team game. It's usually 
Um, you can get away with a few more if you're like in a free-for-all because the chance of you killing the same person multiple times decreases in a team game. About three or four kills, um, the enemy team's gonna come and start trying to revenge kill you. So if you find a good power position, after you wear out your welcome, about three or four kills, you need to find somewhere else to go. Um, the next big point, and it pains me so much to talk about this, is don't PTFO in Vanguard. And what I mean by that is in other games, other Call of Duty games, even other shooters in general, PTFO, getting on the objective in something like a domination where you can get on the point and defend it, was kind of effective. You could hear where people were coming from, the spawns were relatively predictable, so it allowed you to get on the objective and defend the area in a way that worked pretty effectively. With Vanguard's fast time to kill, the bad audio, the crazy map design, the weird spawns, it's not very effective to do that. And you're going to find yourself very frustrated. And you're going to notice in your games that people really don't play the objective in objective games. And this is exactly why. Because they know if they get on that objective, they're going to get killed. It's suicide. So, caveat, because I can't tell you to just not PTFO. Only jump on the objectives after you have cleared the area. So, rather than just getting on the point and trying to fight it out, that's not going to work in Vanguard. And in an objective game, you will end up losing if you try to do that, because you're going to get killed so quickly on the objective. People are just going to be essentially farming you, right? So what you have to do is clear out the location. Find the angles where people are watching those objectives, the angles they're approaching from. Check and make sure it's safe first, then start capturing. And in addition to that, even if it's uh, like on a domination, if you're by yourself or the capture's not going very quickly and you don't know where people are around you, I would recommend only capturing the objective for a little while, maybe not a full capture, and then moving off the point, finding a position of advantage nearby, waiting to see if people come to kill you, try and clear them out again, then return to the objective and continue capturing until you get the full capture. Or if you manage to have teammates that show up to help you out, great, it can go even better. I think you're going to find that that doesn't happen very often for exactly the reasons I've discussed here. So, I called this point don't PTFO, but really what it is is PTFO in a very deliberate and defensive way. So, this is one of the reasons why one of the reasons why I initially was really put off by the multiplayer balance in this game and why I'm still not a huge fan of it versus like Modern Warfare 2019. Um, I feel like this fast time to kill and a lot of the weaknesses of this game are going to make it not a long-term great thing for me personally. But since I've been using some of these tips, I've been really enjoying the game a lot more. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to talk about, and it's another thing that I really don't like about this game, it's another thing I did not like about Cold War, is you need to know the game's meta. Because of the fast time to kill, fast time to kill weapons are going to be dominating every game that you're in. Right now, because it's early on with the unlocks, the STG, the MP40, they're ruling the roost, right? Because they're fast time to kill weapons. There are more faster time to kill weapons later down in the tree, um, especially when you unlock different attachments. So when people start unlocking everything, start unlocking the full attachment tree for weapons, you're going to find the meta shifts. But you can kind of keep up with that and be ahead of it by saying that right now, at least the way that things are balanced, automatics with a fast time to kill and low recoil are going to come out on top because they give you the best ability to take advantage of that connection, take advantage of that fast time to kill. It's just the way it is. So the corollary to that is if you're trying to play with off-meta weapons or trying to rank up a weapon that's going to be on meta but only after you unlock a bunch of attachments for it, you need to really double down on playing defensively, playing more tactically, using that reserved play power positions to make sure that you're only getting battles that you can win. Because you're playing against someone who's already unlocked everything. They're going to have the fastest time to kill weapon in the game that's a laser beam of death, low recoil, and you're going to use something like what's the AM44 or whatever that's that right out of the gate, the recoil is ridiculous on that thing, okay? So you have to change the way that you play, change the way that you're going to get those engagements. Even sometimes maybe you have to wait for people to show up to you. Maybe you have to be in a mounted position so you have lower recoil before you unlock those attachments. You really have to double down on playing slow, playing defensively. So, yeah, the current meta is really faster time to kill weapons, faster rate of fire, maintain the damage as much as you can. Um, when you're coming up with your build and unlocking things, you want to 
you want to keep your time to kill as high as possible, so try not to put a lot of attachments that reduce your damage or your damage range, and then put everything else on there that you can to try and reduce recoil and make the weapon controllable and accurate at medium to longer ranges, depending on your playstyle. If you're only playing up close, which honestly some of these maps don't give you that option, um, then you really need to be mindful of keeping the weapon on target, reducing that recoil. Maps like Das Haus, Sometimes you can just whip out a shotgun or something else that's close range. That I found that that's very effective on Toss House, the shotgun, um, mainly because I noticed that I was getting absolutely wrecked <laughs> by people with shotguns on that map. So it's started to become like the oh, it's Toss House. I guess I'm gonna whip out my shotgun and start one hitting everybody. Um, you have to stay aware of this. It's I felt like I feel like games with slower time to kill, games where the weapons are a little bit more balanced and not just like okay, kill as fast as you can gives you the opportunity to play off meta, to play things that are more fun, like think back to like Modern Warfare and like using the Odin or using some of those weapons that weren't like the best of the best, but you could still play well and be competitive because the game allowed you to kind of use the balance of the weapons. It wasn't all focused on high time to kill because the time to kill was a little bit slower. I just, personal preference for me, but you need to be aware of it in Vanguard if you want to have success. So let's sum all this up. If we want to boil all of this down into three easy tips that you can take into your next games in Vanguard so that you'll do better and have more fun. Play slow and watch your angles. Use fast time to kill weapons with low recoil. And only play the objective after you've cleared the area. If you do these three things and you follow the general tips that I've talked about in this video, you're gonna, I think you're going to find, much like I did, that this game is a lot more fun to play and a lot less frustrating. Because if you don't do this, you're going to find yourself getting killed around corners a lot. You're going to find yourself just randomly dying without knowing why. You're going to get snuck up on a whole lot by people. I can't count the number of times that enemies and friendlies or enemies and myself have literally been standing next to each other and not known it because you just can't hear it. I'm not going to get off on a rant about how bad the audio balance is in this game, but take into account that's where the game is right now, and do these things, and you're going to have a lot more fun. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed these tips. Hopefully they're helpful to you. If you like this video, go ahead and leave me a like. If you didn't like it, leave me a dislike. Either way, leave me comments. Let me know what I can do better, what you enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Vanguard so far? Have you been playing like this, or have you been playing aggressive and having fun? I don't know. Let me know. Uh, subscribe for more stuff like this, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.